How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So as you guys know, or as you should know, I like to sprinkle in all sorts of R6 content on this channel from news to tips to top fives, everything you can think of on Siege, I like to post it. And then the big part of that is the future of Siege and how Siege is actually gonna grow. Now, obviously I absolutely love this game. This is the favorite game I've ever played and it's definitely the longest I've ever played a game. I've played the game since year zero, so five full years. Now, obviously I've had on and off times where I took a break for a few months, came back hard, but overall I've been playing this game consistently for about five years so if I seem a little bit biased throughout this video it's because I am pretty biased towards Rainbow Six Siege and I believe in the game a lot this is one of those rare games that any FPS fan is gonna eventually play even if they haven't played it yet they will eventually play it and they will get addicted to it so with that being said we could assume that these are gonna be newer players they've never played the game they don't have that 2,000 hour advantage that some of us players do have so Siege's goal to narrow this gap because there's a 2,000 hour player and the zero hour player. They want to narrow this gap so it's not a huge gap. There still needs to be a skill gap. There still needs to be some reward for playing their game obviously, but by adding a few features like the ping 2.0 system, the middle crosshair, little things like that, it makes a huge difference in getting new players into the game and getting them actually wanting to play Siege and not just getting their ass kicked every time they play. So I'm going to try to keep this part as unbiased as possible. So I'm going to give you two scenarios. So the first scenario is myself. So 50 has played throughout all of his accounts 4,000 hours on Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, I know that's not something to be proud of, but in reward for that, he knows every little part of the map. Alongside that, I get the knowledge of knowing every operator, and in general, I've played with the mechanics thousands of hours, so I know how to use my operator. I use the mechanical side of Siege much better than someone with zero hours. So now as for zero hour little Jimmy, that's what we're going to call him. So little Jimmy just turned 13 and his mom just allowed him to get Rainbow Six Siege for the first time ever. So our boy Jimmy doesn't know a thing about Siege and we're going to throw him in this world of 50 plus operators, 20 plus maps, and we're going to say good luck. Good luck to you, bud. And that right there is unfortunately why a lot of players buy this game and never play it because it is just too hard to get into and that skill gap is just too big. So when I think about the skill gap, I think of this player that has played this game for five years because that's how long the game's been out. And then I think of this player, Jimmy, who hasn't played a second. So a big problem I'm seeing with the higher ranked community and very trustable people that are actually really, really influential in the Siege community is they don't want the skill gap to close a little bit. So by adding, say, the ping 2.0 system, we reduce a little bit of map knowledge because you don't need to know every call out. The little crosshair dot, that reduces the skill it takes to actually have good crosshair placement. So a guy you guys may know about, I'm sure you do if you've ever watched any competitive, is Kickstar. So he's been in the scene forever. I used to watch him well before I had a YouTube channel, and he is also a a commentator for the pro league so right when the season's test server came out he had a really good insight i would say on the two new features so the ping 2.0 system what he said about it the ping 2.0 system brings casual siege and competitive siege closer together casual players will be able to communicate without much learning slash effort i don't know how i feel about this i want casual siege to have more in common with comp siege but lowering the skill gap question mark and kind of the same thing going with the center dot this dot is going to make finding the center of your screen automatic when in the past it was rather difficult difficult. In my opinion, this will elevate many players. Some will like it. Others will say it lowers the skill ceiling. And the reason I love those two tweets is because it's very, very true. This is going to lower the skill gap. This is going to lower the skill ceiling. But is that a bad thing? In my opinion, no. Now you might be saying these are so small, these aren't gonna change map knowledge or anything like that, but it's not true. Whenever you're trying to call out someone in a room, say you go into a room and you don't know what the corner by the shelf is called. Now this corner does have a call out of course, but now you could just ping it with your ping 2.0 system without actually having to ping the operator by using the yellow mark. And boom, just like that, I ping where someone is without any map knowledge. But you gotta ask yourself two ways. Does this really lower the skill gap that much? I would say no. The only thing holding these people back is they don't memorize what places are called on the map. But as for the players with three, 4,000 hours that do know that call, they could still use the call. It's still better than a yellow ping. You can say exactly where the person is. And you could do it live, unlike where the ping, where it's kind of distracting, honestly. This makes it so the new players, while still having fun with the game and learning the game, they could still be helpful to their team, ping out where players, 
players are, try to have actual team chemistry. Because as you know, if you've ever played in lower ranks, there's not really much talking that goes on, not much communication. And Siege overall, this is a game where you want to talk a lot, you want to communicate, you want to strategize. So just by adding this feature, this little minuscule feature, being able to ping where people are without them actually knowing and pinging where gadgets are, it's going to make that barrier to entry just that much easier for the newer players. And it's not going to completely kill the skill ceiling because, well, the ceiling's still the limit at that point because, well, there's always going to be better than a yellow ping. You can always have better teamwork and actually talking is always better. But casual players don't always want to talk. And why does it matter what casual players want in a game that has such a loyal fan base like Rainbow Six Siege? Now, every game always has this predicament. Do we cater more towards the competitive side or cater towards more of the casual side? Now, I'd say previously, Siege definitely makes buffs and nerfs based off of Pro League things. And that's really tough because when you have one to two percent of the entire population of like these really competitive CL type players of the entire population of Siege and you're making decisions for everyone else based off of their gameplays, that's where things get a little tricky. And that's why I got to look at other successful games that have been going for decades. So I'm going to show you a few game statistics and compare them and do they cater towards casuals or competitive? So first thing, Call of Duty. What do they cater towards? Really more of the casual scene. But let's talk about revenue and why these companies actually make these games. So Call of Duty in 2019, we're going to bring it back to 2019. They reported that Call of Duty made them $1.1 billion for that fiscal year. But Rainbow Six in 2019 reported that over the previous four years, their total revenue is $1 billion. Now, obviously, there's a huge gap there because Call of Duty comes out with a title every single year and yada, yada, yada. But we can correlate that directly to who they actually kind of tilt their games to. Now, Call of Duty has a very, very strong competitive scene as well. So that shows that you can have a casual and a competitive and they can overlap each other. And what they do very well is that their game can be played both casually and competitively, depending on game modes. Now, when we look at Siege, we see this game with a ranked playlist, a smurfing playlist, which is newcomer mode, and then a casual game mode, which I'm sure we could throw a bunch of different words in to describe that one, but it's, it's, it's bad. So obviously some new modes, some new game modes when it hurt, honestly, would not hurt at all. But we need to make it easier for new players to come into this game, come into the world of Rainbow, and actually enjoy it. And that's why I think this all correlates back to the Pink 2.0 and just the little changes we are getting. The vote, vote to Kick system is going to be removed after like midway through this next season, Shadow Legacy. And the Pink 2.0 is just a shot into the right direction and the crosshairs. There's a shot into the right direction in getting Siege more widely arrayed and low lowering the skill gap just a little bit to let these new players in. Now, obviously we don't want the difference between gold and diamond to be like nothing, but in my videos about like the ping 2.0 system or about the changes in Shadow Legacy, I have a few of you guys acting like the silver two down the street is as good as the TSM pro team which isn't the case, and a little drone being able to ping something, it's not going to hurt them, they get to use it as well. So if you don't get the gist, even me as a player with more experience that has hit plat basically any season far back as I can remember, at least on one account, I believe that the newer players are obviously very important, and we should make the skill gap less about knowing a call out, or knowing where the center of your screen is, and more so, encourage these players to learn strategy, to learn how operators work, and not make learning this game feel like reading a textbook. But that's going to do it for this one. I want to know what you guys think about this skill gap issue that we got going on. I think it's a great thing. You guys might think other. Let me know what you think about my opinion on it, I guess. But let me know if you guys have any other topics that you want me to go over and give my two cents on. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.